Hi everyone, Julia here recording this November 30th, 2022. Please consider subscribing and sharing this video. This is the Archaics Live broadcast from November 27th, 2022, entitled Ancient History and Calendars are Post-Reset Reconstructions. Jason begins by sharing how the William Johnstone book series entitled Out of the Ashes reveals what it will be like after a worldwide reset. He says it illustrates how awful humans can get. Like with the Walking Dead series, we're not zombies, but other humans were the real threat. He warns that the series is not for the light-hearted. Jason promises to teach what no others teach and that what he teaches is all verifiable. Jason shows a book published in 1877 stating that the 155-year-old book is a list of charts and tables of ancient literature, which is the same literature available today. Jason claims that cuneiform tablets were found in the hundreds of thousands and that there is no written record of the pre-flood world. He says that history is entirely recorded post-reset, and that all writings and calendars are in retrospect with factored-in begin dates. Jason shares that within the last five or six years, a date of 2239 B.C. was given to the old writings found, the oldest writings found. He speculates that cuneiform tablets were mimicking actual electronic tablets similar to the ones we have today. Jason says that he sees a reset population reusing what technology they could, using clay to record events illustrating constellations to show dates. He says that they lost the digital technology, so used the mud and clay tablets to model their electronic tablets. He points out that there are no Sumerian texts that were written in real time and that the writings came only after a cataclysm. He states that many sources support that the advent of writing was not a gradual process. Jason stresses that the stories on cuneiform tablets happened 500 to 1,100 years before they were written about and he says that that is a problem. He says that Ice Age propaganda is total BS. Jason claims that during the building of the vapor canopy constructions, they didn't have writing because they used their digital tablets, which were carried in bags, to communicate. He says that survivors had to come up with a way to communicate. Practicing on clay tablets, and that's why there are so many cuneiform tablets everywhere. He surmises that a standard of symbols developed rapidly and spread. He says that during the vapor canopy, writing was purely abstract, and that after the cataclysm, they needed to write things down as they no longer had their crystal-based technology. Jason teaches that once all the infrastructure was lost, that the survivors went to work to tell history. He says that the writings became a syllabus shared with all cultures, and that's why all cultures have similar beginning stories, and that they had over 500 years to spread the syllabus that covered 3,000 years of history in retrospect. Jason explains that Plato tapped into these teachings of the original syllabus, but that they didn't have the full account, and they mixed in details, often injecting far older syllabi. He states that the Heliolithic Empire emerged after the sun appeared, and that the syllabus string of teachings led to the Genesis story. He says that the events of the pre-flood world is part of the syllabus. Jason points out that all cultures refer to Westerners appearing in fleets and then advancing the people. He mentions how academia today denies the 600-year periodicity, pointing out that Noah was born 600 years before the flood 
and 600 years later the Anuna arrived with Inki. Next was the capture of Luna, which occurred after the first Nemesis X object. He reminds that it's all simulated and that either it already really happened or we're waiting for it to happen. He emphasizes that when we lose infrastructure, that we still have abilities, but that it takes more than a century to regain the lost technology. Jason says that after the flood, the 600-year period switched to a 138-year period, providing resets that wipe out humans, bringing on the Dark Ages. Jason asks us to imagine that we're on the cusp of advancing technology to levels of the locomotives in the year 1626, and then a reset takes place, and that by 1764, the spinning jenny was invented, leading back to the same level of advancement, ultimately leading to the first skyscraper in 1902, when we were spared a major reset. Jason claims that people rode on wood, fabric, etc. during the Age of Heroes, and cuneiform was no longer needed. He says that some used the phoenix as a war strategy, and that there were no writings in the Dark Ages. Jason states that by 1625, the world started waking up from the Dark Ages period, and the cuneiform documents were lost and forgotten. Jason informs that it was in the 12th century B.C., when historians first emerged. He mentions how the Egyptians and others preserved facts in fantastic frames of reference, as is illustrated by their mythologies. Jason points out that there was a 350-year-long dark age in the Mediterranean. He says that there were a series of rapid-fire dark ages and that there ha we have no original writings, including the Bible. Jason explains that history is not an unbroken chain of documents, but it is a result of piecing 25 years 25 centuries of history back together after coming out of the Dark Ages. He briefly discusses how Alexander worked hard to find the old writings and that within a 400-year period, historians put together the history of the world the best they could. But then Rome started hiding things to keep control. He explains that the church historians helped with the project, also inventing narratives, and even destroying originals to conceal facts. Jason cites that the 522 AD is the beginning of the Annus Mundi calendar in retrospect, and that was the only year that the Phoenix and Nemesis X were here at the same time. He says that our calendar date ba dates back to 1 BC, but that it was not invented until 522 AD. Jason says that preservation of information, all being in retrospect, is a problem, and we need to know that history is not fluid like it is presented. Jason argues that the slow development model of history is a limiting view of our true abilities and potentials. Jason exclaims that books from 155 years ago are still listed today and that all we have is copies of copies to assist in finding parallel chronomarkers used to piece together what really happened. Jason proclaims that everything lines up perfectly for the 138-year periodicity of the Phoenix event. He says history is useful, but there is much conjecture and that archaic data is date-specific. He says that the Phoenix is not in any other records because it was lost. Jason says that the elite have much information preserved underground and that's why some books resurface like happened in 1902. Jason says that if academia doesn't like some book then it's probably informative and that some old fiction has a lot of history. He claims that the book of Jasser is the, has the best chronomarkers and should be read with a calculator. He reviews how archaic stands for advanced research of chronological history of artificial intelligence X, 
and is a play on the word archaic, meaning ancient. Jason ends by stressing that his information is not fear-based and to please see his We Immortals playlist on his channel. He says that nothing negative matters. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. And if you'd like to make a donation, there's information in the description. I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Remember to focus on what you want and always help others if you can. Ciao, ciao.